Now, Nigeria's booming hair industry is dominated by mostly Asian companies who supply synthetic and real human hair for everything from weeks to weaving. However, in recent times, local players are also slowly, uh, slowly catching up in this highly competitive market. Now, weeks and weaves have become the biggest money makers in Nigeria, in an industry dominated mostly by Asian-based companies. On the show today, we will be focusing on how to position this emerging market to becoming the hub in Nigeria and indeed Africa. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Now, the federal government has introduced digital token to replace the 11 digit NIN. Also, Nigeria and Ghana have gotten Trade Dispute Settlement Committee. These were just some of the stories that wrapped up Business Nigeria for this week. We'll take a look at the highlight. The federal government has restated Emirates' winter flight schedule to Nigeria following the offering of daily slots to airpiece at the Dubai Airport DXB. This was contained in a letter to the Emirates country manager, Nigeria, signed by the Director General NCAA, Captain Musa Nuhu, dated 21st December 2021. Last week, the federal government reduced Emirates Airlines' entry into Nigeria to once a week through Abuja Airport and suspended from Lagos following the refusal of the Dubai CAA and the Dubai Airports to grant Airpiece three slots it requested out of the 21 frequencies as agreed in the Bilateral Air Services Agreement, BASA, signed by both countries. The amount spent on subsidizing premium motor spirit, popularly called petrol, rose to 1.60 trillion naira between January and November this year. The latest data from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited show. The data also revealed that NNPC's remittance to the Federation Account Allocation Committee in the 11-month period dropped by 1.78 trillion naira. In its report on funding performance between January and November 2021, which was obtained by our correspondent in Abuja on Wednesday, the oil firm said it had maintained troll subsidy since the beginning of this year. The federal government plans to introduce digital token to replace the current 11-digit national identity number effective January 2022, it has been learned. As such, it plans to make illegal and a punishable offence any company or agency found verifying the 11-digit national identity number. This was announced in a booklet by the National Identity Management Commission entitled Facts About NIN Tokenization. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Adeniyi Adebayo, has inaugurated an interministerial committee for the implementation of the signed joint statement between Nigeria and Ghana. The joint statement and the interministerial committee are the outcome of a high-level bilateral meeting between the Nigeria delegation led by the minister and representatives of Ghanaian government, led by that country's Minister of Trade, held between May 31 and June 2nd. And this was contained in a statement issued by the Minister's Special Advisor and Media, Ifedayo Shayo, in Abuja. The National Assembly has transmitted the 2022 budget passed by both chambers to President Amado Buhari for assent. The Senate had passed the 2022 budget of 17.126 trillion naira against 16.391 trillion naira as presented by President Mamadou Buhari. While passing the bill on Wednesday, it increased the benchmark price of crude from $57 to $62 per barrel, from which a proposed increase in revenue is expected. The sum of 3.8 trillion naira is for debt service. 6.9 trillion naira recurrent non debt expenditure, while 5.4 trillion naira is for capital expenditure. All 
All right, welcome back. Those were the stories that rounded up on Business Week in Nigeria for this week. Now, the hair business is a strong developing area to sink money into not only in Nigeria, but globally. There is no doubt that doing business in human hair, hair salon and wholesale hair distribution is a giant industry that earns you a huge amount of money each year due to the fact that everyone in the world is in need of hair service. Now, joining us now is Christian Love. He is the co-founder of The Confident Black Woman. Uh, good evening to you, Christian. Many thanks for joining us on Business uh, Insight. Uh, good Classy to see Africa. you, Justin. Uh, how are you Nigerians? Such an opportunity to be here. Yeah. All right, very interesting. For yeah. my, the, the, my, my background, I just uh, mentioned that uh, this particular industry is actually a very emerging one and there is a great potential. But just how much is there to really you know, get from this um, industry in Nigeria? Uh, you have to look at the global perspective because we live in a global village and everything is interwoven, interconnected and we, in order to play, uh, even in Nigeria, you need to see what's happening globally. $483 billion was spent in 2020 uh, uh, in the beauty industry. Now 24% of this was from the hair industry. Wow. So, um, so if 24% of this is was from the hair industry, what you need to ask yourself is what portion of that global uh, reach is coming to Africa, what portion is coming to Nigeria. And so that rather than being fixated on oil and all, uh, all the other source of income, um, this viable platform that can generate income, not just for government, but put uh, millions of young people in en employment need to be exploited. Uh, need to be fully maximized. So the opportunity is humongous, mm. and we're and we're taking we're taking the bull by the horn. We're not taking it easy. Just like we uh, is being dominated currently by China, by Indian, and by all the developed world. Uh, I think seventy percent um, of that four hundred and eighty-three billion dollars is between North America and Asia uh, Pacific. And Nigeria and Africa is not even uh, recorded in the data uh, that was uh, that was gotten. So uh, it's a it's a and we're playing big time. I mean, China is bringing in hell every day over uh, because we have 200 million people in Nigeria. You know, and in Africa we have 1.3 billion people and almost 600 million of the 1.3 uh, uh, billion people in Africa. Uh, they are women, and 75% of that, they are young people that need to make air, that needs to look good, because uh, for every woman, the most important thing is how they look. And how they look, it shows, uh, uh, make, uh, how they look eventually uh, shows how they are going to feel, and, and there's a huge economy that is tied to the look of the woman. And the, here is the first thing that you see with a woman, no matter how beautiful he, she looks, the hair is, is the most important thing. So it's a huge, huge uh, 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 opportunity for us to tap into. All right, interestingly, uh, um, Christian, you talked about uh, you know the, the Asian countries and uh, some uh, Pacific um, American countries you know, dominating about 70% um, of that particular amount that you mentioned. But there is a wide value chain, yes. you know, in this industry, the weeks, the weavers, and you know, you know. But how come we've not actually, you know, maximized the, the, the value chain? Even if it means that we cannot really do the main hair itself. I mean, there are other angles that we should actually, you know, have some bit of a competitive advantage. Yes, you know. So, um, in terms of sales in 2020, 48 percent were through online sales. Mm -hmm. Um, about 5.6% uh, for online channels, offline channels, uh, meaning brick and mortar, is not uh, that uh, commensurate. Um, just like you said, the, the value chain in the hair industry includes the logistic company. DHL mm -hmm. makes a lot of money from, logistic, uh, from hair making because you need to ship from, the, from China and ship to the US and export. So mm -hmm. you import the raw materials, you export the finished product. So on both sides, logistics is making a lot of money. Then uh, PayPal and all the, uh, all the uh, mm -hmm. online, mm -hmm. yes, pay, uh, all the payment company, they're mm -hmm. making a lot of money. Uh, so logistics, the finance company, they are making a lot of money. 
of course, the, uh, the manufacturers of machines, they are making a lot of money. Mm. So uh, what is left is for uh, what, what we're currently participating in as a, as a nation is the finished product, uh, which is not bad. We can start with that, but we need to be able to scale to participating in the entire uh, value chain. And you know, the making of air is not just the making alone. There are a lot of people that are involved from procurement to finish product, yeah. a lot of people can be employed. And based on uh, uh, our work with Instant Arawa Hair United States, uh, in the last four years, uh, we have shipped more than 5,000 units uh, to, the, to the US um, with 100% rating in terms of the quality of finished product. Okay. Working with more than five, uh, uh, five braided wig companies in Nigeria, uh, one in Abuja, uh, three in Lagos, one in Abuja, Ibadan, right. and I think one also in Paracourt. All right, Christian, yeah. uh, but in all of this, as, yes. um, you know, as wonderful as uh, you know, this particular news is, you know, how Nigerians can actually explore, we found that that's one issue, because I've had um, the opportunity to discuss uh, with you and some other stakeholders, yes. and uh, one prevalent uh, you know, issue that was just resounding was that of uh, standardization. What have we failed to do? Because most times, uh, for some people, you know, you see... If you go along um, Allen Avenue, UK, I see people just in um, umbrellas, uh, not even in uh, shorts per se, uh, but they are there doing weaves and um, you know, braided and wigs, and, uh, but they seem not to have a bit of standard. How do you ensure control in Nigeria? Now, so one of the things that Instant Arewa here that we work with in the US uh, is very uh, critical about is standardization. So because quality control is what we sell, not air. So what we sell is really quality, not air. That's the way we speak within the hair industry. So, and we're working with uh, NAPTEP to be able to ensure that there will be certification for every single person. So they need some sort of education. Uh, a lot of graduates are actually within the space. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm a lawyer, so what am I doing? A board member is a uh, neurosurgeon, consultant, neurosurgeon, God's will, is yeah. an investment banker, until I studied uh, strategic management. So the thought leadership within the industry is, is very sound people. And so, so and, and you, need to, you need to praise the resilient nature of those young people that are on under umbrella mm -hmm. because they are refusing to sit down at home. They are saying that we're going to do whatever it takes to put food on the tables of our family. And so what we need to do is just upskill them. And uh, currently we acquire a, a space that can house uh, uh, 200 people at a go in terms of physical online, uh, physical training and uh, a physical training. So we're going to be doing a lot of physical training uh, with a lot of people, and we're also collaborating with NAPTEP to, to give certification. Mm -hmm. So within the next one year, you, you, you have to, uh, as a salon owner, you have no choice than to be certified so uh, by, by NAPTEP. And so that way we could actually ensure that if you are talking about short hair, there yes, is a standard size, there is, there is colors be, and everything. Everything is going to be standardized. That's why when we did the 120 hair challenge, challenge 120 minute hair yeah, challenge, 120 yeah. minutes hair challenge, you saw the... I the, saw innovative stuff. Yes, and the, uh, and, and the criteria. You know, mm. you need to be able to do it fast. You need to do something that is sellable. You need to do something that is of quality. The finishing must be world class. Okay. So the standardization is beyond edge, is beyond schooling. Mm. Is the ability to translate your innate capacity into innovative air style, but to now do it at scale, do it uh, with speed, and do it in, in a way that it can match the global standard. Okay, let's talk about um, business environment. Uh, specifically here in our country, Nigeria, that's what most, uh, you know, industrialists uh, complain about. They talked about, uh, uh, you know, the, the right environment for business to thrive. You know, what exactly are the main issues uh, in this particular industry? Uh, what are the requisite, uh, you know, challenges that need to be sorted out maybe by government, by public-private partnership in such a way that uh, Nigeria can be a hub so other African countries can indeed come to us, you know, for, you know, standards and for qualitative hair products. Okay, so, you know, for me, I, I don't blame government for anything. Uh, uh, you can't give what you don't have. And government is doing their best. You know, when people compare us with the global 
uh, economy, I'll always ask Nigerians, how much tax are you paying? You know, well, I'm not saying that government should not create an enabling environment, that is their job, but the private sector has always driven the economy. Yeah. Uh, from the banking sector in the 80s to the, uh, to the creative industry, where our music is now permeating the entire atmosphere to the Nollywood industry. So we are also taking the bull by the arm uh, to drive the necessary process. That's why we're working with NAPTEP, it's the government agency. We're mm -hmm. working with Center for Black and African Culture. Uh, we're going to be go going to Atlanta to showcase some things uh, uh, of, of what, what Nigerians are have, uh, have the capacity to do. We were in Ife, Ibadan, Bini, uh, throughout this year, just talking about hair making and how it's contributing to, to the economy. So we're already engaging government agency. And of course, more still needs to be done by government, by the Minister, Minister of Trade and Investment. I just saw him speak now. The, there must be a, a policy that, e that evolves, that drives the creative economy. Uh, CBN has a lot of funding for the creative economy, but the ability to, uh, to find the nexus rather than uh, just throw it out there to the, uh, to the big players uh, alone, there must be an enabling environment that guarantees that every single person who has the talent, who has the skill, and who is willing to do the needful. Uh, because one of the things we've also discovered is the soft skill is even more important than the technical skill. The soft skill. The soft skill. The ability to uh, to be resilient. The ability to to think through issues. The ability to follow instruction. The ability to, as a young person, to know that uh, to to know that it, there is a standard that I need to follow before I will use my initiative. Mm. Because there. The standard has been proven with years of research. One of the challenges you have with creative is they despise science. One of the challenges you have with science, scientific people is they, they think creatives are just all over the place. But creatives and science, they are both two sides of the same coin. Mm. So you need to scientifically innovate as you create. So the standardization you are talking about has to do with what is the measurement? When we started with some breaded, breaded way companies, uh, way companies in Nigeria, we said you got to use scale. You must measure the the weight of. Air. They said no, it's not possible. We said no, it's not possible in your in in your current reality, but it's possible. And before you know it, uh, everything now is possible. And by working with uh, some of these breaded way companies in a recent data that came up, one of those companies became the biggest wig making country globally. Mm. It's not a Nigerian data, it's an American data. Oh, so, wow. so, so it is possible to scale, it is possible to upskill the people, it is possible to upgrade the entire value chain. All right, uh, value chain is really wide, like I had said earlier on. But let's talk about uh, you know school leavers or entrepreneurs. You know, as much as possible, try to give. Uh, you know, advice for people who may just want to be their own bosses. Now, in terms of this particular industry, just in what um, aspect of the value chain can um, a fresh school leaver who uh, may not have all the requisite funds, you know, how, just where can he or she play, you know, just in case he wants or she wants to be on their own? You, you know, uh, number one, uh, I have a different perspective of being your own boss. Uh, nobody gives an amateur uh, to solve uh, to solve skillful problem. You know, if you have a heart surgery, you don't say you don't go to a general practitioner. Mm -hmm. And so, the first thing I would like to say to every person is get all the skills that is required. You know, our, our parents taught us very well. Mm -hmm. I know my mom. I even used to. My sister is pop possibly looking at me, Adiola uh, Akimbo, like being in the UK now. I know I, I used to tie her uh, hair you know, uh, when I was growing up, because everybody learns how to do that, even mm -hmm. as you're growing, uh, as you're growing up in our traditional homes. So those little skills that you already learn, so you just need to go to the salon beside your house to continue the skill. What is more important is not what you earn, it's what you become. Mm -hmm. So keep, keep drilling down on the skills that you require. You know the, the hair challenge that we had? Mm. One of them came one hour, 30 minutes mm. late. 
And yet she came third because she, uh, she owned a skill. She knew the type of air she needed to do, and she knew what she's going to sell. You know, so what, what I would advise young people and parents, ensure not just air making, we're talking about air making today, ensure that with all the law, with all the medicine, with all the elect, elect, elect with every skill that people are getting in the university, learn a and work. It's called the Jewish phenomenon. Mm. And the reason why the Jews do it is because they have been, they've gone to slavery before and where degrees are not going to work. But where people still require to look good, people still require to do plumbing, people still require. So all the necessary skill that everybody needs to have, we must have it. I have, I have an incredibly, incredible ability to speak. You know, that's part of the gift God gives me. Yeah. So on almost every subject of human endeavor, I own my skill so that when I come to, to the table, I have something to say. So everybody must look inward. Uh, you know, I, I like to travel back home. He said, uh, we, we knelt down and chose our destiny. When we got to art, we're now being driven in different directions. directions. You know, a fish doesn't need to go to swimming school. A bird doesn't need to go to flying school. Ability. It's natural. So everybody needs to know what is in, 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 intrinsic in to them. Ability, yeah. And they now develop it. Now, for the air industry, I, I, I'm telling you the truth. In the, next, in the next five years, more than one million homes will be directly and indirectly impacted, either by... Uh, by, by, either by uh, participating in logistic, either by participating in selling it, either by online, you know, every, every process that needs to be, uh, to, be, uh, to be in place, we're putting it in place. Mm -hmm. So that we're not going to be complaining about unemployment. And why it is critical for and work to be part of the global economy is because there is a trade deficit when what we're importing is more than what we're exporting. Mm. And when we're not exporting as much as we're importing, yes. then the balance of trade and is negative for us. Yeah. So anytime we are saying dollar is increasing, what we are saying is we're not producing. Yes, we're not exporting. We're more. not exporting. Yeah. So if we focus on production, yeah. we will see that the, the, the cost of food or goods that we're complaining about yeah. is going to, it's going to balance out. So the vocational industry and the hand work industry is the way to go. All right, John, thank you so much, I'm Christian. We can actually just go on, oh, you know, you know, for, for hours and uh, discussing yes. this particular uh, issue because it is something that will blossom over time if we actually took our time to standardize and do all the needful. We must say a very big thank you to you for you know, joining us to look at um, the hair industry in Nigeria and, of course, uh, the place of growth for the sector. Thank you, Justin. It's such a pleasure to be here. I hope to come over and over again. So <laughs> the pleasure is on us. All right, that's the size of the show for today. We must say a very big Thank you to uh, Christian Love. He is a co-founder, Confident Black Woman, and he has joined us to look at um, all of the issues, all the prospects for the hair industry, and how Nigeria can indeed be the hub in the, for Africa and, of course, uh, globally. We'll return again next week. Bye for now. <laughs>